<clears throat> Twilight Sparkle, the Princess of Friendship, in light of her impending ascension to the throne of Equestria, and in anticipation of her many duties and responsibilities forthwith, does hereby intend to make good on her previous offer to you, Starlight Glimmer, of replacing her as head mayor of the School of Friendship. You'll be sorry! With her ascension to the throne coming up, Twilight follows up on her word from a matter of principles. <sighs> I can do this. I can do this. To appoint Starlight Glimmer as the new head mayor, and to make it easier, Starlight tries to hire a vice head mayor, one of the options being trick See, God, I hate the synopsis! Hello, everyone, and welcome back to At The Screening. I'm Thespio! And I'm the voice of reason. And before we start discussing a horse shoe in we should probably give a brief moment of silence for Phyllis the Philodendron. Okay, moment's over. Now to properly talk about offsetting penalties, the episode. <sighs> I'm okay. Wait. Offsetting penalty... Huh? Right. Forgot. Non-sports fan. Okay, so there's a term in football used where both teams commit penalties on the same play. Normally, this would result in a loss or gain of yards for one team if they accept the penalty. But since both sides committed a penalty, assuming both penalties are of equal value, there is no loss or gain of yards and the down is replayed. That is what I feel I'm getting from this episode. Only instead of two negatives resetting to zero, it's a battle between positive and negative moments and no one's really gaining any ground. So it's more like a constant back and forth of good moments and bad moments that make it hard to say if this episode was good, bad, both, or neither? Uh, uh, yeah. Somewhere in there is the final verdict of a horseshoe in. Although there is one definitive thing we can both agree on. Yes, it does feel like a combination of a matter of principles and all bottled up. No, it is nowhere near that level of abysmal. I... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Just... God, was this the very definition of flip-floppy. Okay, okay, let's at least try and tackle each standout moment chronologically, because I feel that's really the only way we can properly talk about it. First things first... Twilight intending to make good on her word of promoting Starlight to the position of head mayor. Um, didn't Starlight herself flat out tell her that was a horrible idea back in a matter of principles? Does Twilight not remember what happened last time Starlight was given a position of power? The cutie map, anyone? Well, hang on now. The cutie map was four seasons ago. God, I feel old. Since then, Starlight, as I mentioned in the best and worst episodes of Season 7, with All Bottled Up, has made the attempt to A. Fit in, and B. Make an effort to come across as a reasonable and well-meaning pony in Equestria in spite of the things she's done. Yeah, she did promote Discord to temporary Vice Head Mayor after throwing a temper tantrum, and almost got herself and her friends killed looking for Silverstream. Yet, she still attempts to follow directions given to her, and has established a very good connection with the students at the Friendship School, despite her past scheduling issues. If anything, those experiences has her prepared for anything, assuming magic still exists in Equestria. Thanks, Cozy Glow. Mmm, I, I don't know. I mean, that is a fair argument, but you need to remember that we've had other situations where Starlight was either forced into a position of power by someone else, or she forces herself into a position of power, both with varying results. The good, I guess, being leading the misfits into wear and back again, but the bad being things like literal brainwashing in the cutie map and every little thing she does, and trading away Trixie's mobile home without consent in the road to friendship. Starlight just has this constant back and forth thing with her character, and I think it's just frustrating to watch. Should I root for her, or should I still be skeptical? I don't know, the show staff can't seem to pick a side with her. But, at the very least here, I will say I can appreciate Starlight wanting to stay focused and make sure that she does her job well. She still takes this job seriously, and being given the promotion is putting more weight on her shoulders, because now she has a lot more to watch over. Not just the students, but everything. 
but at this point it's hard to tell if she'll truly be successful or not. Not just with the show ending soon, but with troubling lines like this. Do you think I'm really up for it? Of course you do. I've covered for you every time you've had to run off and save Equestria. Which has now been exactly one time. Uh, but, I mean, yes, of course. Thank you! Yeah, last I checked, A Matter of Principles was the only time she's really covered for Twilight while she was off to save Equestria. Yeah, she's been called to missions by the map and a royal problem, and she's been left to do things on her own countless times, but she's never really covered for someone that much in any sense of the word. So, I don't know, I'm still on the fence if promoting Starlight is really a good idea. Heck, even Phyllis, a potted plant, is being a pretty good visual metaphor for our skepticism in all this. See? I told you it could work. Hence, the need for a vice principal, and she doesn't go straight for Trixie in this case. There is a legitimate hiring process. Heck, most of the candidates did show promise. Two didn't. One was obvious why she wouldn't work. The other was Trixie. <laughs> but yeah, why in all of Equestria would you accept Spoiled Rich as a possible candidate? I don't care if she's a ranking member to the school board, she has DC lobbyists written all over her face. Nothing gets more loyalty than a big stack of bits. This book on business will teach you all how to earn your own. Chapter 1, Equity. Tell me I'm not far off. Also, you're making Trixie look better by comparison. Stop making Trixie look better by comparison. You know, with moments like this, I'm almost thankful that the show is ending because I do not want to see more of the spoiled family heritage. But yeah, back to the other candidates. Octavia, Dr. Hooves, and even Big Mac seem like pretty nice choices. And what worked even better was that they cared enough to put in the effort for the job, like a good principal should. They each put in the work to really connect with the students as both substitute teachers and counselors to the parents. Although, Big Mac wanting the job, I was a tad confused on. Doesn't he already have a farm to help run? Especially since his sister Applejack is already pulling a double as a teacher before the Ascension? Honestly, if he was picked, that would mean that Sweet Apple Acres would be run only by Apple Bloom and Granny Smith. I don't know if this is true or not, but I don't think running an entire farm is a simple two-pony job. But regardless, I can still appreciate Big Mac trying his best, even if his discomfort for detailed communication was his undoing. And even at the end, despite showing promise, Octavia and Dr. Hooves left on their own merits because of other commitments. So I can respect them all for at least trying. Which is more than I can say about our biggest problem. I imagine there's a lengthy process to go through before you inevitably hire the best pony for the position. Wink. Die in Tartarus! <clears throat> yeah, Trixie's the thing that keeps swinging the pendulum the opposite direction. So, instead of the normal ranting and raving from us about how Trixie is the worst, even though that would be the most cathartic thing in the world right about now, how about we just list all the misdeeds this self-absorbed, below-average illusionist commits? 1. Making blind assumptions about positions of power. Wow, I heard the whole thing, and all I can say is, I am humbled. 2. Treating the hiring process as a joke. I'll probably interview several ponies. Of course, several. 3. Admitting to why ignoring history is bad. I know history's important, but I never learned any of it, and look how I turned out. You're living in a trailer. You're one body of water away from being a Chris Farley sketch. Four, breaking the rule of three of comedy. Wink, 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 wink. Five, lashing out at guardians during conferences. Well, most parents or guardians want to be involved in our students' lives. Maybe we should find a different representative from Griffinstone to be Gallus's guardian. Six, possible international incident. Gallus doesn't need to know I'm proud of him, and he certainly doesn't need me trekking all the way to Ponyville. Good, because you're no longer welcome. Seven, shifting the blame from her terrible actions. 
It's thoughtful that you'd want to check in on me after my shocking confrontation with Grandpa Gruff. But never fear, I shall recover. Eight! Putting school children in danger! Ignoring she done effed up. This was a disaster. It was dangerous. I think the words you're looking for are great and powerful. Ten! Self-admitting she's the wrong pony for the job. Obviously, we can't have what we want because I'm terrible at everything and could never help you with anything. Eleven! Murdering Phyllis! Potted plants scream desperation. Phyllis, no! Okay, okay, that last one was a joke. But you see where we're coming from, right? Brick a brack a firecracker, sis boomba! Nepotism, nepotism, rah, rah, rah! Yeah. That. But. If we want to try to at least be fair, and believe me, I do mean try, Trixie at least had one good thing going with instilling nap time slash mental health breaks during classes. Starlight, I've given this a lot of thought, and even though I still believe naps are a valid use of class time, you'll be the one running the school, so if you say no naps, then no naps. Yeah, contrary to popular belief, that is actually a pretty healthy idea for schools to utilize. Just, why did it have to come from Trixie? Well, she's currently 1 for 11, that's not a good shooting percentage. But, like I mentioned with student council, when she does something either admirable or ends up making me laugh, I can't ignore it. In fact, another one of the few good things she does has to be the best possible decision made towards the vacant vice principal position. Sunburst gets the job. When I watched that for the first time, I raised my hooves in relief and excitement to how perfect a choice that is to help run the school alongside Starlight. The Starburst ship is still intact! Yeah, that's true. Sunburst really is the perfect choice. But again, why did this good idea have to come from Trixie? Why is the show trying to get me to like this pathetic blue twat waffle? Because believe me, it's not gonna work! Oh, don't worry, Starlight immediately puts Trixie in the vacant counselor position. And that somehow makes it better?! No, but now we're back to hating her without remorse. Good, because I don't know about you, not only is Trixie a terrible choice for vice head mayor, she's also a terrible choice for student counselor. Right here, right now, name one instance where she actually showed signs of caring about the students and their well-beings. Uh, uh, mm, Gallus, maybe? I'm grasping at straws, aren't I? Just a tad. <sighs> Look, I don't know about you, but I was actually hopeful that with everything Trixie has done so far, this would be the last straw and Starlight has no choice but to break off her friendship with her. I hate to be blunt, but not all friendships go swimmingly. We clearly see how frustrated Trixie makes Starlight and even vice versa since season six. I've said it many times before, but it bears repeating, the Stixie ship is abusive and toxic. Which brings us to possibly the most therapeutic moment in the show that's almost on par with Rainbow Dash telling her parents off after all the rules they broke in parental guidance. I created the position because I need help, but I can't think of any way that you would ever help me. Twilight's friends always helped her. Oh, that's because Twilight's friends are competent. They care about what they're doing, and they know how to do it. This. This. A million times this. I could watch this scene over and over again, and I would never get tired of it. Call me sadistic if you want, but you have no idea how long I've waited for a moment like this for someone to call Trixie out on her constant BS. Not just that, but to have it actually stick. Yeah, don't think I haven't forgotten about you, All Bottled Up. Yeah, the blow up in All Bottled Up was a close contender, I'll admit. But to have Trixie just brush it all aside having learned nothing cause where would the fun in that be is inexcusable. This is as close to the real deal as you can get, 
and I felt nothing but euphoria afterwards. Thus concludes probably the longest episode of At The Screening. I still don't know what to think about a horseshoe win. For every good idea or moment brought up, it's automatically cancelled out by a bad idea or moment. This does feel a lot like Hooves neutral territory for me. But unlike a trivial pursuit, which I labeled a guilty pleasure, the bad moments are too great to ignore, which prevents it from receiving that ranking. Yeah, at first, I honestly didn't know how to properly rank this episode either. I kept on going back and forth, and it's left me feeling the most conflicted that I've ever felt in a long time. I wanted to go Hooves neutral at first too, to be fair, but the more I thought about it, I'm sorry, the more I saw the bad outweighing the good. However few goods there may have been. So yeah, a horseshoe in definitely gets my hooves down. Whew, glad that's over. Now we can get to another conclusion episode with Daring Doubt. Five Bits says Dr. Caballeron or Awi Zodal are the villains once again. In any case, thanks for watching at the screening. I'm the voice of reason. And I'm Thespio. Thanks for stopping by the balcony. God, I need to lie down.